Hmm. Now, of course, it's giving me trouble today. Let's come on, let's get this guy sorted out. Uh, there we go. Now they have a new feature that suddenly popped up where it types out on what I'm saying on the bottom. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Go figure, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's give it uh, a minute or so. We're a little late today, but we start a little late and then we'll get cracking. I don't know how to turn that thing off. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. There we go, I think that turned it off. Okay, then let's get moving and see anybody else who wants to come in can certainly do so. All right, are there any, uh, are there any questions from where we were last time? No. Questions? Well, that's good. Yeah. Why is it that we don't get support from the government uh, uh, in regards to uh, internet security? Uh, well, I don't know if you were at the session where I described what, what, what Uncle Sam has done about computer security, but I wasn't very complimentary because the answer really is diddly squat, right? Congress doesn't know what the hell it's doing with this. Uh, Congress has had seven, I, can't, I kid you not, seven different bills on information security sitting in Congress, never debated, never passed into law, and some of them date back to 2005, I kid you not, 2007, right? They've never passed a single law that's, well, they have, but I mean, they passed a thing called can spam to punish spammers, you know, send you spam. Well, you know, you wonder who the genius was who wrote that when the spammers in Russia or somewhere, how the heck are we going to find them or catch them and put them in jail? So basically, it's a very good question. And Uncle Sam is asleep at the switch. And shame on Uncle Sam, right? Because um, not only are they not doing anything to protect us, it's even worse is the federal government itself is getting hacked left, right, and center. In fact, about three or four years ago, uh, the, o the office of, uh, I forget the name, OPM, the Office of Personnel Management, which does all the personnel, the HR stuff for the entire government, including people with uh, security clearances, you know, the guys who work for the military or the, the NSA or the CIA and, you know, people who've got military clearance are all in that database and they got hacked and they lost the entire database. The guy stole everything, you know, including all the information about the guys with uh, security clearance and, you know, just, just horrible. Um, you know, nobody went to jail. People should have gone to jail about this, right? Um, you know, this is pretty much like, you know, letting the Russians invade through New York airport, right? You know, they say, yes, sir, you're bringing in a bazooka? No problem, Mr. Russian. You just come right on in and bring your bazooka and your machine gun. That's basically what they did. And so uh, don't get me started on this, unfortunately. I'm very disappointed on how bad Uncle Sam has been itself at security <clears throat> and how bad they are about doing anything to prevent uh, us getting hacked and so forth. So, you know, mostly the stuff that you will read in the press has not come from anybody who knows what they're talking about. It's come from journalists. Most of it is junk, right? They, they just report and then they make it, you know, your classic stuff is that it's all hair on fire, right? Um, you know, they, they just want to get your head up, but there's no solutions or anything. So, <clears throat> you know, how, how did the OPM? Okay. So let me ask the question to the group. Those of you who've been listening for a while, um, how, how did they, do you think, whoever hacked these government organizations, let's say the OPM and lost all the record, the personnel record, how did they get in? Probably somebody answered an email. Somebody answered an email. Yeah. No, they didn't answer the email. They did what? They opened it. Opened Click. it. They, clicked. they clicked on the link. Right. They so some email link. went out, of which I'm probably going to show you today. I have dozens of them. I kept them from just the last few days. Um, that said, you know, click here and get $5,000 or click here and get free this or free that, right? And some jerk, some idiot in the government clicked on it 
It may have been some senior person. It may have been some, you know, low level clerk. It doesn't actually matter who did it. And that let them in and allowed them to install software on that person's computer. And then that software is very clever. It will hop from one computer to another computer to another. Because now all these computers within the government are linked together, right? Because we work in, let's say we all work for, you know, the Department of Energy. So if my computer's infected and I send you an email, you will get infected and so on and so on and so on, right? And it's clear that, they, that their technical guys are fast asleep at the switch. Because when this happened, say with the OPM, as well as several other breakdowns, they didn't know about it for several months. Now, it's bad enough if I leave my front door open, as I use the example, and, and some guy gets in, you know, leave, I leave my front door open with a note on saying, go into Kroger back in two hours. Well, you know, if some guy walks in, opens the front door and rips off my TV set, you know, <clears throat> shame on me, or really shame on him for being a, a thief. But I've, if I then come home from Kroger and I don't notice for two months that my TV set's been stolen, shame on me, right? And that's exactly what happened with it. Now, the same thing has happened in private enterprise with Equifax and just about every company you can think of, right, who've been hacked, but they've all been hacked the same way. So remember what I've always said, you see this device here, it's called a phone, and there's no way anybody can get into my phone. No way. Unless one thing happens, and that's I let them in the door. And the way I let them in the door, mostly, not exclusively, but mostly, is clicking on the link. Very much the same as, you know, answering the phone. And I'm pretty sure that people in the government are, are getting called all the time by these scammers, by these robocalls. But their goal there is not to steal their money. Their goal is to get into the government computers, right? So, you know, I call some guy, I pretend to, <coughs> I pretend, I say, I call you up and I say, you work for the Department of Energy, let's say. And I call you up and I say, hey, this is Jeff. I'm in the Department of Energy Tech, tech Support. There's a kind of problem with your account. I, I need to help you fix it. And the person says, sure, no problem. What do I have to do? Well, you know, blah, 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 blah. Give me your ID and your password. And they do. And then the rest is history, right? I use that ID password to get into you know, your email account at the Department of Energy or the city of Atlanta or wherever it is that you happen to work. And then within 15 minutes, I've infected the whole system. And, you know, the worst is that they, <clears throat> they don't even know about it. So that's a long answer to a very good short question. Uncle Sam is totally asleep at the switch. And, you know, you can see that my hair is on fire right now because it drives me nuts. You know, we spend billions of dollars on the CIA and the NSA and the FBI and, you know, the whole alphabet soup. And basically, they're not smart enough to teach their people to click on the link. So one more, one more point that'll really make you want to cry, okay? The, uh, the government has a rule that every single department, every single of the, you know, 40 or whatever government departments they are, the big ones, the DOE and the uh, IRS and all of these guys have to be audited every year by the uh, independent auditor general, right? Independent. And then each, each department is given a grade, A, B, C, D, and F. Well, every year, at least 10 departments get an F. Every year, most of them get Bs or Cs. Every year, about two or three departments get an A. The IRS, believe it or not, is one that gets an A. I think the Department of Energy gets an A. The rest of them get you know, Bs and Cs and Ds, and quite a few get Fs. And this has been going on year after year. There's one department, I don't remember which one it is, that has had an F every single year for about the last five years. Nobody gets fired, nobody goes to jail, nobody pays the price, everybody just says, ho-hum, yeah, we'll fix it, we're terribly sorry, we'll fix it, and then nothing happens. So uh, I have to give you the really sad, bad news that your Uncle Sam, basically who you are paying for through your taxes, and you paid through your entire life while you work uh, in a job, you pay, pay taxes to Uncle Sam, doesn't seem to know diddly squat about what I'm teaching you about, which is, you know, unbelievable. Uh, I've done work for one of the most sensitive government departments there are. I won't tell you what it is. And eventually I bailed out because it was almost, it was worthless trying to get them to actually do anything. Basically, as a consultant, they wanted me just to cover their butts, pardon the expression, right? They just wanted, uh, you know, check some boxes and, um, you know, make them look good, but they didn't actually want to do anything. 
Um, and and I, one, that's the only time in my career I've actually walked away from a client. Eventually I said, thank you very much. Here's my report. Pay me my money and goodbye. You know, and that was it. Now, I left a lot of money on the table because they would have hired us for, you know, many more projects. But it was a waste of time. You know, it's like a doctor telling you, you know, don't smoke, don't eat the wrong food and so on. You keep on doing it. Well, it's not the doctor's fault anymore if you've got, you know, you've got, <clears throat> you know, if you smoke too much, you're going to have lung cancer. It's not the doctor's problem. And, and this was exactly it. I was the doctor and, and they wouldn't give up. So very good question. And I wish that more of the voters would start asking our congressmen, why are you doing nothing about this? Um, like I said to you last time, it only was about, oh, I don't know, last year, I think. And finally, the government leaned on the telephone companies, on AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and, and T-Mobile, the four big guys. There's only four of them, so it's not a big job. Uncle Sam leaned on them to stop, not, not to stop the scam call. They didn't force them to stop the scam calls, which they can easily do. They forced them to put a message. So when your phone rings and it's your friendly scammer, you get that message, telemarketer or scammer or something on the screen. But it doesn't stop you from answering it, right? So, you know, I'm sure many people ignore that message and still answer it and talk to these guys and, 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 and you know, what's going to happen. So um, not, 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 not a good situation that we're in uh, in that respect. So let's move on. So, uh, sorry, one, one point uh, um, <clears throat> on the slide here, you can see uh, you've got my, my email address, uh, jeff underscore calvariscare earthling.net, or you can also send email me at jeff dot calvariski at gmail.com which is a slightly shorter email address i probably should use that one if you send me an email i will send you all of the slides that are in here so okay we, we've spoken about i'm not going to go over it again you know i'm, I'm going to skip ahead to uh this this one here so everybody remember this one famous guy no, sun Tzu, no, and no, he no, said no, know your enemy and know yourself so that, mm -hmm. those are good things when you fight a war and general Schwarzkopf used it, even though this guy wrote this book 2,500 years ago. Um, but no, you can't fight a war if you don't know your enemy and you don't know yourself. But when you say know your enemy, well, know yourself means know your weaknesses in this context. What can they do to me that will make life bad for me? And know your enemy is what can he do and what can't he do? And you know, most people just don't know what the enemy can do. Everybody thinks, you know, the newspapers and the, and the media uh, basically say, um, you know, such and such a company, the city of Atlanta got hacked, Equifax got hacked. As you and I know that now, now you should by now know that's baloney. Nobody gets hacked or it's very hard to do that. Somebody clicked on a link, right? So in my last job as a chief information security officer, we used to send out to our people fake emails look, you know, we'll click on this See link, if they click. You get this for free. And if they clicked on the link, obviously it didn't go to the bad guys. It would come to my group that, you know, Joe Smith clicked on the link. And then we would send a little email to Joe Smith's manager. And, you know, Joe Smith's manager would call him in for a little discussion of, you know, you've been told how many times not to click on links and you did. And most people knew that if they got caught out by us, and we weren't trying to get them into trouble, we were just sending, you know, fake emails to them that really came back to us to see if they were ready to click on links. And people knew, do it twice and you get terminated, right? That's it. We can't have you in the company because, you know, that's too dangerous, like having a drug dealer in the company. You know, you're going to get us into trouble. So people knew that, um, you know, don't do it. So if we could do that, why can't Uncle Sam do it? I do not know. Why could Equifax not do it? I don't know, right? They're all, everybody, unfortunately, when it comes to computer security is asleep at the switch. And each of you guys could stand up right now and pat yourself on the back because you're doing more than many companies that I know, right? They seem to think that, you know, <clears throat> uh, computer viruses are like the COVID virus. There's not much I can do about it, right? Baloney, you know, this virus, you can stop entirely. They're the computer type viruses, the computer scan. You can stop them entirely. Don't click on links. Let me say it one more time. Don't click on links ever, right? That's it. 
So you, everybody remember I said, if you do get an email that sort of looks like it comes from your doctor or your bank or something, and Jeff, and you see, you know, you're about to press that, click on that link and you see my face staring at you and you say, oops, I better not do that. Well, how do you find out if it's your really, it could really be from your bank or your doctor or the IRS or somebody? How do you figure that out? What do we do? Okay. Look, at, look at the email address that it came from. Aha, that's a good start. So if this says I'm from the IRS, between, between the, the email brand. came from, you know, uh, modernstealing.com, you remember the one I sold you, that ain't the IRS. So that's a very good start. Excellent. What else can you do? Call. Call the Call company. Them. Right. Go to the go to online to irs.gov or bankofamerica.com or whatever bank you're with or whoever it might be, Microsoft. Well, if it's Microsoft or Google calling you, you know that's crap. Pardon the expression. They don't do that. They're not in that business any more than I always say Kroger or, or, uh, or, or, or a motor car company. You know, Uber is not in the business of finding your, your you know, uh, viruses on your computer. So some guy called you up and said, hey, I'm from Kroger or from Uber and you've got a virus on your computer. You say, get out of here. What the heck are you talking about? But they use the, the name Microsoft, Google, any of the Apple, those big names because people have heard of them. But those guys are not in the, in the business of security. So Microsoft builds security into the operating system. Apple builds security into their operating system, but they're not in the security business. They're kind of just the preventive guys. They like the guys who build the locks for your front door, but they're not the guys who chase the bad guys away. That's the cops, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, be skeptical, call. If you're not sure, even call Microsoft, but it's usually a waste of time because Microsoft don't do that at all. But if it does seem likely that it's your bank or the IRS or the Social Security Administration, first thing is look carefully at the email. And if it doesn't come from irs.gov, exactly like that, not irs.com, because that's what they'll do as well. They may change the, 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 the three letters at the end. So you get something from you know, socialsecurity.com. Well, there, there's not, that's not a government department. The government department is ssa.gov or bankofamerica.com. Uh, can you please mute yourself? There's a phone ringing in the background. Thank you. Please mute. Um, <clears throat> so very, very skeptical about anything that comes in. Okay, so I said, we need to know that, you know, we tend to be um, good people. We listen to what the bad guys say. We give everybody a fair shot. These guys are ruthless, right? So they can find us on the phone, they can find us, they can send us letters. They don't do that anymore. You see this, this bullet here, snail mail, a fake letter from your bank or whatever. They don't do that anymore. Why not? They used to do that all the time. We all used to get letters from, you know, the Nigerian prince who's dead and there's $10 million and they have to put it in a bank account. And just if, the, you know, we let them use our bank account, we can keep 1 million, all that crap. We don't get those letters anymore. Why? Because it costs them money, right? They've got to put a stamp on it. They've got to write the letter. They've got to put it in an envelope. They've got to mail it. And when you go to the mailbox, you know, you can be tracked. Sending an email is terrific. It's free. You can send a million of them out, or two million, or five million. Don't cost any more. And, you know, by the law of averages, if you send out one million emails, 90%, 95% will be deleted. <laughs> but 5% of a million is still 50,000. And of those 50,000 who don't crap, you know, put it in the trash, uh, let's say 10%, read it carefully and then click, well, 10% of 50,000, still 5,000. So of those 5,000 people, now they get just $100 each from you and they always get much more. That's, you know, good money. $500,000 just for sending out a bunch of emails. And they're sending out those emails every day. So you won't probably get snail mail anymore, you know, with a, in a letter. And I said, be careful, you know, <clears throat> anywhere you use your debit or credit card is, is potentially dangerous. Um, you know, ATMs, gas stations, and so on. So the problem at, say, gas stations is they've been found that uh, the bad guys have installed cameras. You know, the gas stations always got this high umbrella over it, this high roof, which, you know, to allow the, any gas to escape and then to keep it cool, not to get too hot from the sun, which would not be good with with inflammable, inflammable stuff, they high up in the top there, they've installed little cameras, very small cameras, but you know, they've got terrific lenses on 
and they're focused on the keypad. And so you put your card in, you key in your PIN number, let's say it's a debit card, they see you putting it in, or if it's a credit card, they ask you for your uh, zip code, they can see that. So now if they, and they can also see the actual card, so if they can see the number of the card, and, <clears throat> and, and if it's a debit card and they now got the PIN number, it's easy for them to manufacture a new debit card with your number on, they got your PIN, you got your PIN number, and you are basically dead. Right. So like I say, all I've said before, and I'll repeat it now, somebody said to me, they didn't hear what I had to say about credit cards and debit cards. Here it is again. Don't use debit cards for, for doing anything. They are too dangerous. Right. As I say in the next one, uh, you know, if a crook your, steals your credit card details, right, the issuing bank will usually reverse any fraudulent charges and you're liable for $50 maximum. They usually don't even enforce that. So if, if some guy makes a copy of your credit card, <clears throat> then goes and buys a you know a thousand dollar or two thousand um, dollar TV set, or what they go and do is they buy thousands of dollars of gift cards at Target and, and Walmart and so on. And then once they got the gift cards, they can turn that into cash by buying stuff on Amazon or wherever. Right? <clears throat> the, the bank will say it's, it was a fraud. You you complain about it, it's a fraud. They give you money back, they reverse the transaction, and that's that. But your debit card, of course, is linked straight to your bank account. So if they get the debit card details, they will take the money out of the bank account and that money is gone, 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 right? It's in South America, it's in Kyrgyzstan, it's in Russia. You know, the, the wonderful thing today is our financial systems in the world are all linked together. Fantastic. The bad news is financial systems are all linked together. So once they get your money, they get your details here, the money can be in you know, Kyrgyzstan or Afghanistan or wherever the heck, or in Nigeria or Ghana, big scammers in Nigeria and Ghana in Africa, lots of scammers there. <clears throat> um, that, that money's gone, gone, gone. And like I think I mentioned to you, Ghana is a very poor country. I think the average income people have is about, you know, a couple of hundred dollars a year, you know, $20, $30 a month sort of thing. That's what they can earn if they've got a job at all. These days, probably nobody there has got a job. But there are bunches of young guys who walk around in zoot suits, fancy clothes, and they're driving Porsches. I think they call them the Porsche boys, right? They're all driving Porsches, fancy cars. Where the heck does a 19, 20-year-old kid uh, get a Porsche in a, in a poor country like that? Well, you paid for it, and I paid for it. And naturally, who are they preying on mostly, right? Are they preying on you, or are they preying on your grandson? Question. They're preying on us. We're the one with the money. You got the money, exactly. Your 16-year-old grandson ain't yeah, got some fun, right? He's got a baseball bat or a football. They don't want his football or his baseball bat. They want your money, right? And so just, you know, people say, well, nobody's going after me. I'm just an ordinary Joe, right? Yes, they are going after you because they know that you have a little money. It doesn't matter if you've got $100 or you've got $10 million. They'll take as much of it as they can. So, you know, be careful with, with credit cards. They're rather dangerous. Right, a debit. So here's an example. You see the debit. I use my debit card for only one thing, and that's the only thing I can't do on with my credit card or in any other way, and that's to get cash at the ATM. Right. Uh, sometimes you can't even get cash. You go to Kroger, you use your credit card, and you ask them to add fifty dollars onto whatever you you paid. Quite often, Kroger and those places will do that, and they'll give you the fifty dollars in cash. So you can do that even with your credit card sometimes, and never risk using the debit card. The debit cards are very dangerous things to use and, um, you know, shame on the banks, in fact, for allowing that to happen. Okay, so we'll keep going. Remember him again? He has, he has, a, uh, um, he has a longer statement from, from Sun Tzu. If you know the enemy, you know yourself. You need not fear the results of a hundred battles. That's a fantastic statement because we fight a hundred battles, don't we? Every single day because those emails are coming in and those emails are coming in. Okay, so let's Oh, uh, here is, I want, sorry, let me uh, just go back to this one. And my famous one here, it's attributed to Warren Buffett. I don't know if he actually did say it, but that's what I've seen. It says, you know, somebody says to you, you know, hey, we, we have a poker game on Sunday night. You want to come over? It's, you know, it's only five bucks. We'll have some fun. We'll drink some beer. Come play. When you sit down at the poker table, it says, look around the table. If you don't know who the sucker is, it's you, baby. Right? <laughs> and... If you don't, if you if you're the sucker, you're going home without your clothes because they're going to take your shirt and your pants and everything, right? 
uh, is, that's the real point is on the internet, who's the sucker? And it's usually us. So let me ask you one single question and we'll move on to more details of email. Google, for example, gives us a really tremendous amount of stuff for free. Is that not so? They give us Gmail for free. They got a browser for free. They allow us to ask questions. You, you know, when you, when you ask a question on the internet, you know, how do I make a cherry pie? Or, uh, you know, how many seconds are there in five years or something? And it's, it comes up with the answer, that's Google. And they don't charge us anything for it. But Google's a hundred billion or something dollar company. Where do they make their money? What are they selling? They're not selling, they don't charge me five cents for every email I send. They don't charge me a penny for every question I, 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 I key in. Where do they make their money? Advertisement. Say again? Advertisement. They make it out of ads, exactly. And so that's all right. They send me an ad, I don't care. Why? But what, what's really important is Google's not just uh, selling ads. Selling you know, that's, your that's email. Google's selling ads to specific, your email people, to specific people. <clears throat> so when they say, let's say I have a shoe store, right? And I want to have a sale. I can go online literally right now. It's happening all the time. And I can say, Google, I want to have a sale uh, in June. And I, this is who I want to, uh, 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 this is my target market, right? Uh, I sell lady shoes. I sell upmarket shoes, you know, Milano, Blonix, or whatever those things are called, with hundreds of dollars a shoe, or I just sell shoes to the ordinary person for, you know, $50 a shoe, whatever. I, this is my target market, either the fancy schmancy people or the ordinary people of this age group. Well, first of all, I want women because I sell women's shoes. Second of all, uh, the shoes I sell are for, you know, adults. I don't sell children's shoes. So for, for women age 20 to whatever, uh, in this age group, and my store is in Sandy Spring. So I don't re really want to advertise in Alabama, right? Or California, or even in Alpharetta. I want to am advertise in Sandy Spring. Google will exactly give you a list of a thousand names, thousand emails, right? Exactly in that demographic. Who's male, who's female, in this economic stratum of this age group, of da 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 da, da right? People who shop on, online for shoes. They know that I don't buy ladies' shoes online. They know that. They've watched me, what I do when I go to Amazon or any other place, I never buy ladies' shoes. I'm not gonna get that email. If you buy ladies' shoes online, you'll get the email. So basically, what, are, what is, when I ask the question again, what is uh, Google selling? And the answer is they're selling you. They're selling me, right? They're selling us. In fact, Google literally knows more about you than you, or your spouse knows about you. In fact, uh, it's amazing how much they know about us just because they're watching us all the time. You know, every time you, you, you go to a website, that they know, you know, if you, if you go consistently to one news channel more than another news channel, they start to know your political view. If I go to Fox News, I'm probably conservative Republican. If I go to CNN, I'm probably a liberal Democrat. You know, even little stuff like that, they can figure out, what, you know, what you do, what you're interested in, right? They know that I'm not interested in ladies' clothes, but they see, aha, I go online and I look for uh, sports memorabilia, memorabilia, because that's what I like to do. I like to buy baseball bats and sign baseballs or whatever, right? They get to know that very quickly. And so uh, over time, Google manages to assemble a phenomenally detailed picture of you. So when they sell the ads, they sell targeted ads. And you and me, we are all the target, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, right? But the trouble is the bad guys get into that. They get into it as well. And that's, that's one of the problems. So let's get ahead. We spoke about emails. And you remember I showed you this one here of all some of the emails that I got in one day. And, you know, if you look at the stuff on the right, it's all different companies, uh, you know, different stuff they're selling me from bladder improvement to get $5,000 to lose nine pounds. But if you look at the email addresses on the left, you see most of them come from the same place. This organization called cronjob.org. Well, what the hell is that? I have no idea who they are and I certainly don't want to find out. But they're a really impressive company because they, they do terminic. Terminix pest control and bladder improvement and uh, extended loans and cash. And you know, obviously there's no such company as cronjob.org. It's some slimy guy sitting in an internet cafe in, in Ghana or Nigeria or 
Kyrgyzstan or wherever it might be, and he's just trying to get into my wallet, trying to get into your wallet. Here's what I mentioned to you about. Here's the, the, the FTC, the Federal uh, b, 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 Trade Commission. Yeah, yeah, Trade. Right. Trade, yeah, Trade Commission. Oops, sorry. Uh, came up with this can spam app. Wonderful name, can spam. Yeah, it forbids spam, right? Basically garbage, you know, they have huge fines. Look at this, $42,000. Ooh, that's really scary. The guy in Nigeria, is, he's, he's terrified of this at Uncle Sam. You know, complete and total nonsense, right? Yeah, that, that should stop all those naughty spammers, says I, you know, sarcastically. Okay, so we spoke about the email and I wanna go, or let's just go, let's just do the, re repeat this one more time. I know it seems like I'm doing this repetitively, but so people, few people know, understand this. Your grandchildren who are whizzes at games and so on, don't know any of this stuff. I can tell you that, right? Or very few of them do or even bother. So if you get an email address and I say, often in front of it between inverted commas, you've got some kind of name like amazon.com or whatever. It could be anything, right? This is, this is just a, a nickname. I can have any nickname I like. I can be called the hunk, the hulk, the terminator. You know, it could be anything I like. Then we have the at sign in the middle, and then some, we've got the two angle brackets. That's the real email address between the two angle brackets. In front of the at sign is usually something like a department, store news, uh, technical support, marketing department, or a person's name. Jeff Kalvariski could be here, or your name. At, and then the name of a company, or the name of an internet service provider. That's called the domain. This part number four here is called the domain. And the domain is really very specific. So there's only one Amazon.com in the whole universe, right? Only one. So if it says Amazon.com exactly like that, not with two M's, not with two Z's, not Amazon PQR.com, but just Amazon.com, I know for sure that this is a real email from a company called Amazon, okay? It may also, when you get emails from people, it'll have their, if it's not from a company, it could well be from, an internet service provider, in other words, it's just my email. So it could be gmail.com, aol.com, yahoo.com, hotmail.com, and so on and on, so on and so on. There are hundreds of companies that supply you with your email, right? Gmail today is probably the biggest. AOL and Yahoo have been around a long time and Hotmail, but they've been way overtaken by Gmail. Uh, Earthlink.net, I still stay with them. I've been with them probably 25, 30 years, literally. I was early on into email. And they're based right here in Atlanta, uh, right next to the 400 um, <clears throat> near Perimeter Mall. So I like to support them because they're an Atlanta company. So again, remember I showed you this. Here's a nice email that says, just click on this link and take a survey. And we see that inside, it says Amazon. So, well, wow, that's cool. But as I said to you, yeah, this stuff in the front is just garbage, can be anything like. Here's the person's name, which is rubbish, five garbage, 5NT, five 5NT five GC72. Here's the domain, modernstealing.com. And I think that one, that one is the best of all because they didn't even bother to change the modernstealing.com. They know nobody looks at it, right? Nobody bothers to look at it. These guys actually had a sense of humor, I guess. Okay. Uh, remember, I said very often down at the bottom, it'll be, you may unsubscribe at any time, unsubscribe. What's supposed to happen with unsubscribe is you click it, a reputable company will say like Amazon, let's say I, I'm tired of getting ads from Amazon or Walmart or Kroger, whatever. They will, you click on that, that's an instruction to them, please take me off your list. And they will. But this came from a scammer, from a crook, from a criminal. Do you think he's gonna take you off his list? Hell no, mm -hmm. right? So when you click on unsubscribe, are you gonna get more crap or less? Gonna get more because not only now do have you told them that you are a real email because you clicked on this link so they know your email address they know it's a good email address so a they're going to send you more junk b what is happening on the, what we call the dark web there's a second internet called the dark web used by criminals and i'm not going to tell you too much more about it it's too scary but the criminals trade the stuff they trade credit card numbers they trade email addresses so now they now know that your email address is a good address. It may be on sale already today, five minutes after you hit the unsubscribe for, you know, for a dime, for a nickel. I don't know, they probably sell a million email addresses for a thousand dollars. 
And another scammer will say, hey, $1,000 is cool. I'll pay that. Give me the million email addresses. And then he starts sending out this garbage. And so it goes, right? So basically, you almost guarantee you're going to get not more spam, but probably much more spam. It's exactly the same as when you answer the robocall. Right. Even if you don't talk to the guy, if you just listen and he says, hey, this is, I, this is the IRS calling and you know, Jeff told you that was rubbish, so you, put, you hang up, what have you now told them? This is a good number, 404, whatever your number is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's a good number. And of course, you're gonna get more of these calls because they will be selling, at the very least, they'll be selling your number as a valid number and the other bad guys who also wanna do robocalls will buy them or, that same guy is just going to now hit you up every 10 minutes for the next three weeks. So don't click on any links. Remember this picture, right? Basically, while you're typing on the keyboard, somebody's reaching out from inside, the, from the other side of the screen and grabbing your wallet, right? And they just really trying to take it. They call this phishing, PH, phishing with a PH. And really, yeah, this cartoon also shows that basically <coughs> the keyboard is, it's got a rod, it's got a hook, it's got a, a line with a hook on it, and that line is in the lady's pocketbook. That's basically what they want to do. So never click on any of these emails. Right. Let's look at this one. <clears throat> Hi, Jeff Kalbriski. So they actually know my actual name. Very often they don't even do that, but they know my name. So now they got my name. As a valued Walmart shopper, we're going to give you 50 bucks. Just fill out a survey. One of my, one of my, um, Students once told me she loves these surveys because it only takes five minutes and hey, I'm going to get 50 bucks. No, you're not, right? You ain't going to get squat, right? Also notice here, uh, down at the bottom, to easily unsubscribe, please click here. Well, you know what I've told you about that. And then down mm -hmm. below, they even gave a real address, 6312 Southwest Capitol Highway, Portland, Oregon. Well, I actually went to look this thing up. And I don't remember now, it was a few years ago. This was a parking lot, right? There's no such address. So what do we do? We look at the email. First year thing is it says shipping status. That's weird. This has nothing to do with shipping status. On the left, we're talking about a question. We've got to answer a survey, right? Some question. The shipping status, obviously, they use this for all kinds of different things. Let's look between the brackets. Blah, 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 garbage at namecheap.com. I have no idea what namecheap.com is, but it's certainly a company I don't want to go and find out who they are, right? That's the nice man saying to the little girl, come get in my car, little girl, and I'll give you a lollipop and I'll take you to school. You know what your mommy, or in, in the old days when your mommy said to you about that. And, and then look at the subject, Walmart. Well, this is Walmart, except misspelled, Walmart with a capital W. Your reward might have arrived, but this has got nothing to do with the reward. It's the saying, do it do a uh, fill out a survey, right? So basically you think, what could possibly go wrong? Those links, the, these are what are called active links or hyperlinks. If you click on that, it will take you to somewhere on the internet. So this will take you to some site that will have the Walmart logo on. They, may, they, you know, they spend their time making it look real cool. And they say, you know, we want to ask you questions. How much money did you spend this week on groceries, right? Oh, I spent, $25. Okay, cool. You know, uh, which store did you shop at? You know, Walmart, Sandy Spring, blah, 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 right? And, and you'll, you know, you'll have five or six questions, but basically they are, <clears throat> while you're answering the questions, if they even have real questions, sometimes they don't even have questions, you may just get an error message, but they have then downloaded software onto your computer or onto your phone, right? And you have now left them in the door. I showed you this one. Hi, Jeff. They know my name again. Looks like you're having trouble logging into Facebook. Click on the button below. Get back on Facebook. And then look how clever this is. If you were to try to log in, let us know. Can you see that this is also a link? Right? So most of us, we're honest people. I wasn't trying to get into, you know, I wasn't, didn't have any problem with Facebook. So I click on let us know and it allows me to, you know, type in a reason or something. Well, where do you think this let us know is going? exactly the same place as this link on get back on Facebook, okay? So it's, it's very much like uh, um, the unsubscribe. They give you more than one place so that you can get in the car and get the lollipop, right? But what do we have to look at? <clears> hey, <throat> okay, look at the, 
Look at the, 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 the from address. Well, it says the name in front is Facebook, which means nothing. Most people just read that one word, Facebook. Ah, oh, it must come from Facebook. Then it, it says security at facebookmail.com. Ah, oh, it comes from the security department. Why would it come from their security department? What's their security department got to do with the fact that I can't get into Facebook? But look at the next, what's after the ad sign. Behind the ad sign is facebookmail.com. Is that facebook.com? No, it isn't. They've set up an email address called facebookmail.com on some sleazy website in Russia or somewhere that didn't ask them too many questions, right? That's not Facebook. Dot com. Remember I said before, it must be exactly the name, Amazon.com, Facebook.com. Facebook Mail is not Facebook. Notice here they've got the F, you know, the logo and the word. And they make it look, but I'll show you how to get these logos off a website, make copies of them and put them on your own website. It takes five minutes, right? Any 12-year-old any can do that. Any six-year-old can do it, right? Mm -hmm. They can do it. So they, they just stole the logo off the real Facebook and then they created this email. And now they sent it to millions of people. <clears throat> Another nice one, after the Equifax breach. Notice the big letters, Equifax breach, my hair's on fire. Are you one of the 143 million people hit by the Equifax breach? Oh my God, 143 million people. Free credit click, three, you'll get your free store, three scores. Just click over here where it says free credit click, right? Just see it says click, remember the click, to me, click is a four-letter word. It's a bad word. It's a naughty word. We don't use it in, <laughs> in polite company. So let's see what we got here. Okay. So thoughtful. They're telling you about the data breach all the time they do this. Let's look again at the header. Your score check. Okay. That sounds all right. Square bra uh, angle brackets. Contact. That doesn't mean anything at all. At. Garbage, 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 A-O-L-E-A.us. I don't know what A-O-L-E-A.us is, but I certainly don't want to go there. And clearly it has nothing to do with this, right? Absolutely nothing to do with this, right? It has nothing to do with the Equifax breach. Look at this one. Ah, get the emergency medical help you need when you need it, right? Med E-medical alerts with a medical sign. That's a pretty cool one. Get started here. Just Click right here. Okay, perfect. Notice the unsubscribe at the top, right? See the unsubscribe over here in the top right-hand corner? So they've, they've got all the tricks of the trade. Who are they going after with this one? Who needs medical alerts? Look in the mirror, right? It's us, okay? And so here again, medical alerts. At con Notice contact again. It's the same scammer as before, right? At garbage, A-O-L-E-A dot U-S. What was the previous one? It had nothing to do with nothing to do with emergency medicine. So this is, you know, get one of these buttons you can press to get to get help if you fall in the bath or something or in the tub. And um, you can see it comes from the same guys, this garbage, blah, 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 A-O-L-E-A -E dot U-S. Again, I don't have to know who these guys are. I just know that that's somebody that I don't want to go to. Okay. Yep. They pay, they pay. Okay, I'm going to skip this one in the interest of time, move on. All right. uh, really sneaky one. This is the cleverest one I've ever seen. Okay, your order, it's, it says it comes from Amazon, uh, your cancellation of this order. Your order has been canceled. You just canceled order number this, blah, 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 status canceled, da, 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 da. thank you for visiting Amazon.com, blah, 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 blah. So what would you think when you saw this? Well, you say, I didn't just cancel an order. What? Wonder what's going on here, right? Must be some mistake. Now notice that the number of the order is in blue with the line under it, which means it's a link. Link. So what do they want mm -hmm. me to do? Click on it. Click on it. Click, Click on, on it. it because that's natural. Let me go to Amazon and there must be something wrong. Maybe they canceled somebody else's order and thought it was me or something. I'm an honest guy. I want to tell Amazon, hey, Amazon, I'm not this person. You, you made a mistake. Well, you know, we know that that isn't the case, probably, right? So we look at the top. Order update. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't even make sense. This isn't an order update. It's telling me about a cancellation. Again, they don't bother to change the stuff. At Amazon.com, <clears throat> but 
what, what they've done here, you see, notice how clever this is. Here between the, 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 the double quotes, that's just like the nickname. They put the real Amazon.com. So somebody would just look at the left side of this and say, ah, this is a, a legit email that came from Amazon.com. But remember, between these quote marks is just like the nickname. I can have a nickname of uh, Paul McCartney, right? That doesn't make me the real Paul McCartney, right? Uh, or I can call myself Barack Obama, but I'm not the real Barack Obama. I can call myself anything I like in here. What's really important is between the angle brackets. So between the angle brackets, we find order update, which is kind of strange because it's got nothing to do with order update, at Amazon, aha, and then these dots. Now those dots mean that the address is too long to fit in there, right? There's a whole lot of other stuff. Well, Amazon.com would fit in there quite easily, right? So what they did was they made this part of the email address long enough to push the email address over the edge here. This is sort of the edge of the page. So really the e real email address is at amazonrussia.com or something, right? I can't read what's in these three dots. Isn't that clever, right? So first of all, it looks absolutely legit. Second of all, they just want me to click on this number here. What can go wrong? I click on it, takes me to Amazon. It says that you, you, know, you, you, can, you, you, you cancel this book, the order for this book. I never bought this book. Right? I never even heard of it, right? There must be a mistake. No, no, no. As soon as you click on this link, you're toast, right? You are toast. Okay? And you know, you say to yourself, I didn't place any orders on that particular date. You can see this is a couple of years ago. This is a real email that I got. Okay, so just watch out. That's heck of a sneaky. Now, where does this link actually go? And the next thing I'm going to show you uh, before we end is how to find out where these links actually go. So this link, if you could see it, which you can't usually because it's hidden behind the picture or behind this, this word with the underline, this link goes to the following address, URL, HTTP, which is, don't worry about what that is, all addresses start like that, colon, slash, slash, www.lshoes.ru. Well, that ain't Amazon, is it? First of all, I don't know what L shoes is. Left, left shoes? I don't know. But who knows what dot RU is? <clears throat> Anybody? No. Well, most email addresses at the end are like dot com or Russian dot Universal. Or club, but other countries can also have their own email addresses for their country. Uh, Russian University. <laughs> so dot RU is in Russia. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? And so... Mm. If you just figured out where this link went, you would immediately say, this is a scam. But most people don't do that. They don't know how to find out where this link goes, right? So shall I tell you where the link, how to find out where the link goes? You do right click on it. Uh, what did you just say? You right click right. on it. What, the, the, you used the bad word. Click. click. We don't <laughs> use bad words in polite company. Uh, click is a four letter word. <laughs> no, you don't right click on it. Okay, that's very dangerous, especially on your phone. You can't right click on your phone, right? So, the way you find out where this goes, let's move on just slightly. I uh, want to skip a few of these. Um, I'll come back to some of these. Oh, here's a great one, by the way. They send me this picture of this cute chick. It says, you know, the girl's waiting for you. You have a new sweetheart, right? But notice where it came from. At nidoo.in. Well, where's .in, do you think? India, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. Man, all I got to do is click on this link and this, I can have a date with this chick, <laughs> right? You know, they're, they're completely shameless. They're completely only, shameless. Only, only your wallet will have a date. <laughs> That's right. My, my wallet's going to have a great date, right? Mm -hmm. I got one the other day. Uh, Walmart has a surprise for you. I'll show it to you in a second. I'm sure they do have a great surprise for me, but it's probably not going to be the one I'm expecting, right? Uh, yeah, start your free trial. And if you see this link, it goes to profbuilder.com and then a whole lot of stuff, right? Well, I don't know what profbuilder.com is. Actually, it turns out profbuilder.com is a real site that's used by programmers, professional builders, people who build software. And it got hacked. 
and now they're using that prop builder site to send out garbage. But here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. So you see this, excuse me, you see this one here? Blood clot filters. Oh boy, I need a blood clot filter. <laughs> you know, I have a blood problem. Okay. And you'll see down here, it says unsubscribe, or you can click on this link, learn more. But the unsubscribe, can you see the little box there? And I'm going to blow it up now. I'm going to make it a little bigger. There it is. Okay. That little box, the actual link is qiilb.ga. And then a whole lot of garbage afterwards. What do you think .ga is? Oh, my God. Is it uh, Atlanta, Georgia? No, uh, it is Russian, Georgia. Russian, Russian Georgia. I mean, it's the other Georgia, Georgia. exactly. There's a country in, in Eastern Europe called Georgia. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, like, don't think that I would like to go there for my next vacation, right? So you click on this link and you get taken straight to some sleazy website that is in Eastern Europe, you know, run by horrible criminals, and they're immediately going to download software onto your phone or your computer and you are going to be toast okay so <clears throat> if you click or tap on this on this on this link you just touch this link here that's where you're going to go right so um let me skip this one ah this one i was just wanted to mention as well uh online companies looking for home workers i mentioned this to you last time this is a big scam going on right now for obvious reasons right i'm stuck at home i lost my job i haven't got any money Ah, I can earn, you know, $15 an hour working from home processing orders or something. Well, this one here went to r.mydailymoment.info. Again, I have no idea what that is, but I sure as hell ain't going there, right? It's probably also in, in Russia or somewhere like that. Okay, so uh, just let's see here. I just want, I want to get in there. Uh, no, okay, so I didn't, I don't think, I, I think the slide is there. So, <clears throat> Here, let me go back, go back a slide. So if we have an attack, if we have a, an email like this, right? So the, the active ingredient here, <clears throat> the active ingredient in the, in the pot, in the, in the drug, <laughs> right, is this, this link, okay? And the way we find where this link goes, if you're using a PC like I'm doing right now, just hover your cursor. You, can you see my cursor? Just mm -hmm. hover it. Put your cursor over the link. Do not click. Click. Just put your cursor there and you will see a little box will open up like I showed you on the previous one. And that's how I know exactly where this was going. Okay. On your phone, now you, you, can't, you don't want to put your finger over it because, you know, when you're touching it with your finger, that's going to click it. On your phone, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner where that link is going. But most people don't look there. It's, it's in smaller print on the bottom left-hand side of your, of, of, of your computer. Uh, of your phone, right? So you can, same thing applies on your phone, but in either case, either pressing this link with your finger on your phone or clicking on it with your mouse or even with your finger, if you have a touch screen, I have a touch screen so I can do it with my finger as well. That's where it's gonna go. So remember Jeff's story. If you click on that link and you tell me you did, I'm gonna ask you to t put that finger on the table and I'm gonna take my pen knife and I'm gonna chop it off, right? <laughs> bad finger <laughs> i don't want you to have that finger anymore i'm going to chop off that that finger that did the clicking now obviously I'm, 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 I'm kidding you but just think of it like that that you know if i click on that link jeff is going to cut my finger off okay so that that's the really bad place so now what i would like to show you uh come on baby there we go uh show you something very quickly
Look, uh, where did I put those emails? A whole bunch of emails, and I don't know what I did with them. I wanted to show you. Um, I haven't got them. I don't know what I did with them. I'm sorry. Uh, was it in here? Yes, here we go. Okay, so look over here. Can you see? This is my email. This is my Earthlink account. Here you can see, look at this one. Uh, Donald J. Trump, a total crook. Well, you know, that'll get my hair on fire. If I support him, I don't want, I want to read that and tell them they're wrong. And if I don't support him, well, I want to read it and see why he's a total crook. Scam email. Look at this one here. Um, can we you see know, we, we can't can we see it? Can you share it? Walmart, you have been chosen. So let's open the Walmart one. You have been chosen. Okay. Hello, Jeff. We don't Gal see the, uh, we don't see your uh, sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am terribly sorry. I am really, really sorry. Uh, 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 here we go. Sorry, my apologies. Okay. See, I could see it, so I assume you guys. There, there you, uh, there you okay. go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so that's my email. There was a whole lot of emails, and this email was said from Walmart. It says, subject, you have been chosen. Hello, Jeff Kalvariski. Will you be the next lucky recipient? Crack the egg. See? Notice this is clever. They didn't say click. You see that? You see how clever these mm -hmm. guys are? Mm -hmm. Crack the but, egg. So I click on the this egg, is a and click. egg opens, it's a click. and I'm going to get $50 or something. Notice the unsubscribe, okay? And what do we do first? Aha, we go and look at the email address. So it says here from Walmart, but we know that first thing is just the nickname, it's rubbish. So we now go and look, you see the angle brackets? You see the less than sign and the greater than sign? It comes from alert, what the hell does alert mean? At indeed.com. Is that Walmart? No. No, it isn't, okay? Now it says click here, and it also says reward inside. So notice I'm going to put my cursor, I'm going to put my red cursor, can you see the cursor? And I'm going to put it right over this, this egg. I'm not touching my mouse. Look in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. Can you read that? It's fairly small print. It says perfsites.com slash, and then a whole lot of garbage. Can everybody uh -huh. see that? Yes. Well, small, what is perf? What is perfsites.com? Do you know? I don't. Nope. No. You want to go there? Anybody want to go to perfsites.com? Just no. get in my car, little girl. I'll give you a lollipop, right? <laughs> you know, okay. So let's go and look at the unsubscribe. I'm going to, you see the unsubscribe? I'm going to just put my cursor over the word here. And what do you see down on the bottom left hand corner? Goes to exactly the same place. All of that garbage actually happens to be exactly the same. So you think mm -hmm. one would be going to, the, the, you know, to Walmart, and the other one would go to somewhere else that, you know, would unsubscribe me. But it isn't the case. They're just the same link. They, right? So they're going to catch me. Uh, let's go back. Um, I had a whole lot of them that I deliberately did not delete. Uh, there's Walmart again. You see that? You have been chosen. But I had a few. Mm -hmm. that, Great one. Now, this is just the amount of garbage. See, there's Walmart again. You have been chosen. But I had a whole, mm. oh, I had a whole lot of them. I don't know what I did with them. And this is, yeah, I think these are just overwritten. Let me go to the next. Uh, go back a page. Uh, That's a lucky day. Them. I think they've just piled me up with garbage. Uh, but there were all kinds of special offers. Um, that got you important too. Uh, there again, you see Walmart? See that? 
<laughs> you have been chosen. Oh boy, I'm the chosen man. <laughs> I'm the chosen one. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I should have I know, kept them. Uh, no, it isn't it. Ah, there we go. Some, yes, some of them. I kept these. Um, okay, so first, first thing I got from Earthlink support uh, was a notification that this email has been quarantined. So this really did come from Earthlink support, and it found that this this email actually had a virus in it. Notice where it comes from at bftr.com. I have no idea what that is, right? But look at this one. We have a surprise for Amazon shoppers. I'm pretty sure you have a great surprise for me, but not the one that I want. So we have a look at this one and it opens up. And because my, I, have, I have a higher level of security to my email, it's, it's just crushed this whole thing into, you know, this is just a, a picture here. So I can't even see this one, but I can see where it came from, right? Member survey. Where does it come from guys? Newsletters, well, I don't know what that means, at mm -hmm. hohiko.co.uk, right? United now, the UK. UK is what? United, United Kingdom. United Kingdom, not the University of Kentucky, right? <laughs> the football team. This is the UK. Do I know a company in the United Kingdom called hohiko.co? No, I don't, right? Obviously garbage. See that? Mm-hmm. See the other one, yeah. Senior discounts, oh man. Notice, they know I'm a senior. How do they figure that out, right? Well, they watch me on, you know, Google is watching me all the time. Google knows my age, my, my sex, the things I buy, the things I don't buy. So somehow the, they manage to get access to that, know that I'm a senior. So if we look at this one, okay. And again, notice my, my security just, turned it into a picture and I could open this picture, but I'm not going to do that. Look where it came from. Where did it come from guys? UK again. But the exact same company, hohiko.co.uk. Hohiko sounds Japanese, doesn't it? Right? But it's in the UK. So somebody's using a server in the UK. They may have hijacked a real company. There may be a real company called Hohiko and they may have hijacked them and put soft, you know, the, the security in most companies is lousy. So they put their software on there, which is now using their computers to send out this garbage. But notice the previous one had nothing to do with this one, right? The one was, we have a surprise for Amazon shoppers. And this one was senior discounts. They've got nothing to do with each other, but they come from the same company. In other words, there's somebody just sending out millions and millions of emails. So here's a real email. Now, how do I know this is a real one? It says we detected a virus in this message, blah, 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 blah. So Earthlink's actually doing their job. Earthlink's doing what Uncle Sam should be doing. How do I know this is really, that this isn't a scam? So it says, came from Earthlink support. Well, that doesn't mean anything. But now between the bracket, support at earthlink.net. What does that tell me? That's, that's, that's a good that's one. That's 99.9% .9 that that's legit. You see that? 99.99% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. .9 at least, right? I know this is a real email. Actually, they didn't ask me to do anything. Notice it's Earthlink because they're a good guy. There's nothing in here that says click here to find click, out click. what this email was, right? They're just telling me this email came from Galen Dombrowski at bftr.com, right? We Earthlink has quarantined a message sent to you because it contains a virus. And a virus is just a piece of bad software designed to do horrible things on my computer, like find my credit card numbers, find my passwords. And most important, once they got that stuff on my computer, my computer will start sending garbage to everybody in my name and address list. So if you get an email from me and you say, oh, I know Jeff, and it says, blah, blah, blah. Here's some, here's some pictures from the, the, the holiday party. Click here to see the pictures. Let's say we had a holiday party. Should you click on those pictures? Remember, it came from Jeff Kalvariski, came from me. Should you click on that link? Yes or no? I'll call you first. 
Well, exactly. So, but first ask the question, should you click on the link? No. 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 Why not? Because it may be a scam. In other words, even though it came from me, it may not actually have come from well, me come from the message to you. It may have come from a virus that I got on my computer because I clicked on a link and that's now sending it out to every name and address in my address list, right? So exactly right. Huh? If you're not sure, call me, send me an email separately. Don't answer that email. Send me a separate email that you type to Jeff underscore Calvary at earthling.lex. Hey Jeff, did you send this to me? There's one exception or two exceptions when you can click on the link. I'll mention those and then we're done. The one exception is you are expecting something from me. So if you send me an email that says, Jeff, please send me the slides oh, and in 10 or 15 minutes or an hour or even the next day, later or the next day, you get an email from Jeff saying, here are the slides. That's probably okay. See that? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can click. So that, 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 that is probably okay. In other words, there's an attachment. So not only should you not click on links, don't click on attachments because the attachments are often we're dangerous. So if I send you pictures in a file or a Word document, don't open it unless you're expecting it from me, right? The other time that you can click on a link is when you're on a website, when you're on an actual website and it's a good website that you know, you went to amazon.com and it says, click here to buy these shoes. Can you click on that link? Yes, because yes. you are on Amazon, right? So clicking on links on valid websites, on your bank or Amazon or the IRS or whatever, perfectly okay. Clicking on a link in an email, which looks like it's the same thing, is not the same thing at all, right? Yeah. They're like chalk and cheese, as we say. Apples and, apples and elephants, right? They're different things. The, e the link in the email is going to take you to somewhere you don't know, or well, most people don't know. You now know how to find that link. What the uh, what the, the 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 link in the Amazon or the Walmart or the CNN or whatever. You know, you're at CNN.com and it says special offer. You know, click here and you know you get a special offer. That's 99.9 percent .9 okay. Uh, I suppose there are ways that even that could be wrong. I haven't come across one. But if you know that you're on a good website, that's fine. So many websites, for example, will ask you to click on the link to download software. You want to buy some software. So you click on the link. You go to, you go to the, uh, the, the Apple Store, the App Store, or you go to the Gmail, the, G, the Google Play Store, and you want, to get an email, uh, you want to get an app, you click on it and it downloads the app. That's fine because you... You went to the Play Store or you went to the App Store. It was not somebody who sent you a link that said, click on this and we'll take no. you to the Play Store. Yes, they'll take you to the Play Store, but not the one you thought, no. right? Maybe a different Play Store. That'll be the one in, in Georgia or Kyrgyzstan or Nigeria or somewhere like that. Okay, uh, I've gone on a little longer, but there was a lot of good stuff there. I hope that was of use to you guys. Uh, questions, yes. please, comments, brickbats, whatever. Now's your chance. Jeff, I got an email a few weeks ago before we started. Yes, ma'am. It was from Apple. Right. And uh, it was telling me that my account had been disabled and it gave me a link to click, click on. Now, this is before your class, but I just... I was confused. I said, what do they, what do they mean my account has been disabled? Exactly. Because of my confusion, not my uh, intelligence and not my uh, knowledge, I didn't click on it. But That's I very, good, good for you. I'm giving you a virtual hug. <laughs> you did the right <laughs> thing, right? The thing is that most people, you know, they, they're very clever, these guys. They're, they're, they're right. Their goal is they know that most of us are smart, intelligent people. We don't do stupid things. None of us walks in downtown Atlanta at midnight, you know, dropping $10 bills on the ground behind us, right? None of us does anything stupid like that. Or none of us walks across the 285, you know, with our eyes closed. We don't do stupid things like that. But when your hair's on fire, when your house is burning down, when your child is in trouble, right? When, when, when your bank account is going to be closed, you're going to lose your job, you know, any of those kind of things. That overrides our intelligence sometimes, right? And that's their goal. So they, when they say to you, your account has been disabled, my first thought is, oh my God, I can't have my Apple account disabled. Just stop back and step back one second and say to yourself, 
why would Apple disable my account? For what reason? Right? Why would they disable my account? What could yeah. possibly be the reason for disabling my account? One I got, and it's in the slides if you look at it, says you've tried to log on too many times to Facebook, so we've locked your account out. Okay. I didn't even log on one time. You know, some you say to yourself, so what you did was exactly right. But now we know that the chances that that's a legitimate email is about the same as the chance that I'm going to fall pregnant. Right. Well, you know, and the interesting thing is after you started showing us to look at the um, uh, where it's from to, to examine that address, I went back to that email and it was, I can't remember what it said, but it was something crazy. So yeah, I- yeah, Of course. Now, now there, there are a number of things. We haven't had time to look at all the emails and I don't know if we're going to have another session of this. I'll wait to hear from Sarita. But if we do, I'll show you, you know, some of those emails, the, the, some of the other emails where, you know, you'll see- all kinds of clues that tell you this is garbage, right? The first one is, as I've showed you already, you know, the wrong email address, right? Or where the thing before the at sign is not something logical like marketing department or something, but it says something nonsensical, right? The other one is bad English. That's the classic giveaway. Read it carefully, right? And you'll often find terrible English or strange punctuation with capital letters and all kinds of stuff. These guys are not too smart. And most of them don't oh, speak English, right? How they do what they do. So that's a giveaway immediately, mm -hmm. right? Giveaway. Uh, the, if you look in the slides, there's one there that, you know, the English is so fractured, it's clearly not written by anybody vaguely English speaking, right? Now, last point, I, I had a lady who got into trouble like this. She, she, you know, she started corresponding with somebody in the internet who pretended that you know, she, she was a, a middle-aged lady, single lady. She wanted to get married again. This was this handsome American soldier who said he's in Afghanistan and blah, blah, blah. And sent her wonderful pictures and so forth. <clears throat> and he wrote her wonderful letters. She showed me the letters, you know, how much he loved her and da, 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 da. Now, if you're an English-speaking, a non-English-speaking person and you see some beautiful writing, it looks great to you. But if you're English-speaking like we are, you often look at it and you say, wait a minute, nobody speaks like that. That's like Shakespeare wrote, do you agree? Mm. And clearly this guy had just copied the stuff from somewhere, he got it out of a book or something and copied it. And, and one minute of reading this told me this guy's a scammer. But this lady wasn't an English speaking person, she was in Denmark, she got referred to me, right? And I, uh, by the time I was she was referred to me, she had already sent this guy about 3,000 euros, which is over $3,000 in cash. She's a single mother with two kids working on a job. And this guy got her, you know, by telling all kinds of fantastic stories to send him, to send him 3,000 euros. She wouldn't tell me exactly what it was, but I kind of figured out it was that. And I stopped her before the next, he had just asked, essentially it was an email for another 2,000 euros. She was going to send it to him. I managed to stop it. She asked me, could I get the money back? And what did I have to say? No. Oh, money. no. If you want your money back, go to Nigeria and look for a guy driving a new Porsche. <laughs> That's where your money is, right? <laughs> it was very sad. It broke my heart, right? But that's what happens every day. These guys are completely ruthless. So read the email. You almost inevitably will find bad English, stuff that doesn't make sense, like, again, uh, I skipped over it today, but there's an email that I've got there where it's some tech support thing, right, uh, for students at the university, at, the uni at Indiana University, and they get this email from tech support. There's something wrong with your email account. We're going to have to cancel it and delete you from the whole database. But if you just click here, uh, if, if you just send, if you reply to this email and send us the following information, we'll fix it. Your name, your student ID, uh, your email address, and your password. That's all you have to do. Just reply to this email and give us those little pieces of information, right? Well, I guarantee you most people said this is garbage, but there was one or two or five or 10 students who were either a little drunk or didn't read it too carefully or just weren't too smart who responded with that. So now they've got your email address, they've got your password, they are gonna start sending out emails in your name or get into your email account and look for emails where you may have you know, unwisely stated your social security number or your credit card number or something like that, right? 
So again, the rule is actually incredibly simple. Uncle yep. Sam appears not to know it. Most American corporations know it, but don't seem to have figured out how to stop people from doing one thing and one thing only. And what is that? Click. Click. Click the finger. That's it. Click. Right. And Click. I guarantee you. It's don't correct. <laughs> so I can guarantee you that if you don't click on links, nobody, not the CIA, not the FBI, and not the Russian KGB or whatever they call today, uh, not the Chinese, not the North Korean hackers, nobody can get into your computer or your phone. Nobody. Right? Yes, Jeff. Yes, ma'am. I just received an email from Roderick Richardson from Senior Services. Yeah. And it's and it says, good morning. The online course, Internet Security for Seniors, ended on May 19, 2020. This class will not occur today at 11. More so, updates to come. Uh, you know, like I said to you, I try to figure that out, but I'm happy to, to have another session on that. Uh, he didn't, you know, strangely enough, they didn't send a copy of that to me, so I didn't get that email. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to do this, you know. To, so essentially, today was really an unscheduled course there. I didn't get one to but I'm happy to do it. I have no problem. Well, I just started at 10.55 this morning. Ah, okay. Right. So, okay. so this Not is much use to send it out at 10.55, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we will have the class next week. Well, um, let, 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 me, let, me check, let me check with Sharita again, and she'll send out the email on Monday, well, you know, with, with, with a list of all the classes. And um, I... Uh, you know, if it's a class, yes, we got, I got more material we can do, or if we're done, we're done. You know, it used to be that this class was four two-hour sessions at Vincent, right? Now we're doing them in, you know, one-hour sessions. Um, so really, technically, yes. we've gone for eight, eight weeks if we wanted to do all the same stuff, or we can stop after four weeks or five weeks. I, I don't really mind. So you, 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 you'll, you'll hear from Sharita. Hey. Okay. Hey, I got one that says my FedEx order is ready. Say again. You didn't order anything. <laughs> yeah, from my FedEx. I, guess, I get those. I get yeah. those a lot. What from FedEx? From FedEx, my mm -hmm. FedEx yeah. order is ready. I haven't ordered anything, so. I there you know. go. Well, what, what is the email address? Have you looked at the email address? I can, I'm looking at it on my phone, so I don't, can't see it. Uh, uh, you should be able to see it actually, even on your phone. But it, it's harder on a phone than than on a PC because you've got more more real estate or on a tablet. It's easier yeah. to see it on a on an iPad or a or an Android tablet or, or a PC, just because it's more real estate. And they know that too. They're using that fact that you perhaps can't see it. But any, as, as we've seen, they don't really care anyway, because they know nobody ever looks at it. But again, if you didn't order anything from FedEx, why would FedEx be sending you an email? You know, people, right. don't, people don't ask the obvious question. The obvious question, right. right. That's right. I didn't order anything from FedEx. Well, if, if it's a mistake, it's not my problem, right? <laughs> right. 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 Hey, just deliver it and I'll accept it. And <laughs> there we go. You see, and you think, oh my God, you know, they, they they were supposed to deliver something. Maybe it's a million dollars in cash from from the from the IRS, right? <laughs> I better get that. I better get that FedEx delivery. Of course, there isn't a FedEx. There never was one, right? It's it's a scam. It's and, and the same thing from Amazon and Walmart and your bank and the IRS and the social security. You know, if you get the one that says the social, this is the social security administration, somebody has broken into your account. This happened to a lady just the other day, a few weeks ago, and it cost her, I don't know, $20,000 eventually, right? Because she believed the story that uh, her, her, her social security, I think her social security account had been taken over by, by criminals and she had to get her money out of there real quick, otherwise it was going to be stolen. And she went along with the garbage, and sure enough, it got stolen. Right. Mm. Twenty thousand uh, 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 dollars. A middle-aged lady working on a job as a nurse. Okay. So, and I also told you guys about uh, about hire. You remember that? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, I just right why? now while you while we were talking, you probably didn't even hear it because higher higher pardon the expression shit candy. Sorry for the expression instantly. And let's see here, uh, looking at higher, it tells me. I don't know. Yeah, here's this call. It comes from 
somewhere in Florida, a 754 number. Now, do you think there's anybody actually with a 754 number who needs to get hold of me urgently? I doubt it, right? I doubt it. So again, it's a scam, but you know, if you can see on my screen here, if you can see it right at the top, I, oops. Uh, you can see it at the top. Right at the top row there, you see the 754 number, and you can see there's a little, you know, there's, there's the, the, the phone that shows it came in and it just bounced off me, which means hire saw it and it's there. Mm. Yeah. And so use hire because not only are you protecting yourself, you're also protecting me and all your friends using hire. Uh, and the more people using hire, you know, the more we kick them in the rear end so that now we, we'll never stop them because they've got a hundred numbers. And if this number doesn't work, they'll call me again or they'll email me, either call me or email me, you know, on a different number or with a different email address tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. But if enough of us use hire and enough of us block them, then we make life just harder and harder for these guys. And that's the best we can do. Okay. Any, any more questions from anybody? Any comments? Any more questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Look, uh, if I get an email, can I just ha uh, hit scam and that would be the end of them sending it to me? No. You can't if stop I them. What? Just think what you just asked me. Can you stop criminals from sending you, you emails? How, they, how are you going to do that? They're going to continue sending you emails until till kingdom come, right? So if I put in my scam box, this it will continue. That's what you're saying. Nothing, a scam box doesn't do anything, but what? What's the purpose of that? So, sorry, just say that again. It's if I put spam. it in spam. You don't, you don't put it in scam. No, don't put it in spam, just delete it. So all of those garbage emails I showed you, just delete them. Just delete it. Hit delete, hit the delete button. Or if it's on, if, if, if you're on Gmail, then you've got to, yeah, you know, there's a little box near the top that says delete. Right? I think it was. You see on my screen here, can you see the delete button? See the delete button? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. The delete. Just hit delete. That's it, delete it. Don't put it in spam, just throw it away. It's crap, it's garbage. <laughs> delete it. But don't <laughs> click on any links in it. Just delete okay, it. Okay, I got you. <laughs> just delete it, just delete it. So, so again, the, so the, 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 the general rule is this. <clears throat> if this email seems to be too good to be true, it mm. probably is. Right? Mm. Nobody sends you emails offering you money. Nobody sends you emails offering you, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. Nobody does that, right? And so, you know, it, uh, you know Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon, they're not in the, in the, in, in, in the security business. They're not going to call you and say, you know, you have a virus on your computer. My wife got a call from <clears throat> Microsoft that she had a virus on her computer. Garbage, right? That happened to a friend of mine. He got a call from Microsoft. Very nice people. We have this virus on your computer. We found it. We're going to help you. Blah, 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 blah. Luckily, while this was going on, his wife had the good sense to call me. <clears throat> we saved him. He, ne he nearly lost $4,000. Basically, wow. to, fix, to fix the problem, he had to go to uh, Target, buy $4,000 of gift cards, and then just tell them the numbers on the gift card, right? That's all he had to do, and they would fix it. Now the question. If you accidentally click, that's it. Nothing can be done. Okay. If you accidentally click, it may be too late. What I would do is I would instantly power down, right? So if I've clicked on the link and I have a slide on that, you'll see it in the slides. Uh, I, I would close my computer. Okay. Know, let, let it, let it. Now it may already be too late because this happens pretty fast, but you may be lucky. Maybe if you did it fast enough, they didn't get the software on your computer or only got half the software on your computer, in which case they haven't got anything in your computer. And then uh, take it to somebody who knows what they do, right? Don't open it again because then the, the process will continue, but while it's closed and, and powered down, there's nothing they can do, right? That does need your computer to be running for the viruses and the garbage that they're doing to work. Then take it to either, you know, either contact me or 
go to somewhere like a Best Buy's or whatever and, and let the experts look at it, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, but the, the best rule is? Don't click. Don't, Don't click. click. Never click. Never, ever, 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 ever click on anything, right? Just don't do it. Unless, like I said, you're expecting it. So if you get an email from me and I'm saying, you're expecting me to send you an email, the email that I send you won't have any links in it, but it'll have a file attached. Now, don't ever open files that are attached. As they're just as dangerous as links. But you're expecting one from me, A, and B, I send it to you in PDF format. And PDF is a special format that can't be messed with. So the bad guys couldn't have never messed with that email and put anything in it. A PDF is, is like about the safest format you can get. So be very careful if anybody sends you Word documents or Excel spreadsheets or JPEG files, JP, .jpg files, which are pictures. Be very, very careful, right? Because those often have got viruses inside the file that you can see. So be very careful. Jeff. Yes, ma'am. Is it true that if you have an Apple device, you cannot get a virus? No. So if you have what? An Apple device. If you have an Apple device, you cannot get a virus? No, yes, you can. Okay. Right, you can. The rule still applies. Doesn't matter what kind of device you're using, don't click on links, period. No exceptions to that. I said there were really two exceptions. If you're expecting it, like from me or from your brother or, or, or you, you spoke to the bank and the bank manager said, or, or the IRS person said, I'm going to send you, you know, you, you, you call the IRS, you need a form to fill out one of their forms. You don't have it. You call the IRS, they say, we're emailing it to you. My name is Mary Sue. And you get an email from Mary Sue at irs.gov. That is okay. Or you go to a website like Amazon or Walmart or CNN or whatever, and there's a link on that website, that's probably okay too, because you went to a legitimate website, Amazon.com. Now you can click on the link to buy the shoes or whatever. It's perfectly okay. But any unsolicited email that you didn't expect, never click. And even if you got an email from me and you weren't sure, the best thing is call me or you send me an email. Send me a separate email. Jeff, oh, did, you, uh, did you send me this stuff? And I'll reply to you, no, I didn't. In which case, it's somebody trying to use my email address or pretending to be me. Or, yeah, sure, I said it. I remember that's the material that I, that I wanted to send you. Or the IRS will say, we don't send out those emails, ma'am. We never send emails saying you haven't paid your taxes or your social security has been, has been stopped or any of that. They don't send you emails like that, right? Your bank doesn't send you an email saying, you know, somebody from Nigeria got into your bank account. They will, if something like that, that's their job to prevent that happening. And if it does happen, they would stop the attack and put back any money into your account if it was due to weaknesses on security on their side, which probably doesn't happen because the banks actually are very good at security. But most other companies in America, their security ain't worth diddly squat, which makes me mad because it's so, as you can see, this. It's, it's more complicated than what we've explained when you get into a corporate environment, but it's not that much more complicated to stop these guys from getting in. And the first one is don't let anybody in your company ever click. It'd be amazed how, how well it works in my company. You know, we, we said, if you click on it, you're going to get called in by your manager. If you click on it again, you're going to get fired. People said, ah, I don't care. Well, we fired a couple of people and suddenly all the clicking stopped. Fine. People got the message. But after a while, people forget. So we sent out some more fake emails and sure enough, three more new people okay. clicked and they got called into their manager and you know, one of them did it again and she got fired. And so it went until eventually people got the message, right? Don't click on links, right? And if I found out that anybody in the company had sent out an email with a link in it, even a real link, you know, let's say HR sent out a link to, I don't know, you know, your 401k, that person from the HR who did it, who was just trying to do his or her job, would get called into a manager and explain that that's not what we do, right? That's not how we do it. We don't send out links, even valid ones, to other people in the company because people don't know if those are good links or bad links. And you have to assume that every link is a bad link. You have to assume that. And most times that's exactly the case. 
Right, guys. Thank you very much. I, I say I'm not thank sure about you. next week. We, you, you, thank you. You'll probably hear on you. Mon by, by no later than Monday. There'll either be the time at this time, or you can just log in. If we don't have a course, then it, you know nobody will let you in, and you've only wasted a few minutes. Or you, you'll get told, yes, definitely, we're having a session, or no, we're not having a session. Okay. Thanks very much. Have a great thank week. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye. bye, -bye.